Ahoy! Deadlock got an absolutely massive patch today that comes with a completely new mechanic, big overhaul to the map and very important changes to items and many of the heroes. And I'm gonna try my best to summarize this a little bit without making it too long but also not leaving out too many important details. So we're gonna skip over some of the smaller changes that I think are less impactful like two second cooldown changes and focus on the bigger stuff but we're not gonna skip out on any major character changes for example. The biggest feature that Valve has added in the new patch is wall jumping. You can now jump away from walls and this counts as an additional jump that does not use any stamina and does not require you to use up any of your normal jumps or double jumps. In order to achieve this, once you are close to a wall, you want to push the movement button away from it and then press the jump button and you will kind of bounce off. This can be chained with various other movement combos like air dashing for example or a dash into jump combo and it carries a little bit of momentum but not all that much. It's kind of like your double jump which also slows you down a little bit in the air. So it's not the best if you're trying to slide afterwards but it can definitely get you to higher places. It will most certainly also make for an unpredictable juking tool in combat. We also get a completely new movement mechanic with ropes that you can kind of latch onto by holding your jump or spacebar. And not only can you hold onto them, you can also shoot from them. So there's some gameplay potential here. Some of these ended up replacing some of the jump pads on the map, so there will be more of a variation. And I think they're a little bit slower compared to the jump pads when it comes to going up and down, but obviously allow for more gameplay around them just based on the fact that you can stop at any point and go back up or down. A much requested feature has been added to custom builds. You can now drag and drop items in order to quickly change the order or place them into other categories. The only thing that you still cannot do is drag entire categories, but this will make the whole process of resetting a build or readjusting a build with some changes much, much easier. On top of that, there's finally the option to search for other people's builds, which I think will make the top builds much better. So we can go to public here, and I, for example, know that Idorian's build is called Shmovement. So if I type in Shmove, it'll show me the build right away. Uh, you can favorite it as usual, everything stays the same otherwise. But just being able to have the search function to get builds that, for example, your friends made for you as well, is going to make things so much easier. I will, of course, have plenty of these builds in the future. I haven't published mine yet because I'm still working out some kinks. Uh, once I'm done with that, you can find various builds there under Duke's Loth. If you enjoyed this overview so far, consider subscribing and clicking the bell. It really helps out the channel a lot, especially in a new game like Deadlock. If you go into the main menu, you can now click on your name and get detailed character breakdowns for yourself, uh, which gives you all of your stats, including performance on individual heroes if you want to go into the details. Souls collected and healing only start counting from now on. If you're a grinder, you'll be able to play a little more, both on weekdays and weekends. The queues now start one hour earlier. Players can now only pause once per game and a team can only pause three times in total. Guardians no longer give one AP, but instead you're getting AP at the following soul levels. 3500, 5200, 8000 and 9700. This means that if your team is really not getting any lane pressure, any tower pressure, you'll not fall behind quite as much in terms of ability unlocks. The map as a whole sees an incredible amount of various changes, including bounce pad locations, climbing ropes, and teleporter positioning. I'm not gonna show you all of them, but I wanna show you the new teleporter locations because I think those are extremely improved compared to the previous version. You don't need to go far to get to the teleporters anymore. They're very accessible. And one of them is right next to the lane. So a rotation all across the map is incredibly easy. Not that it was hard before, but now you have two options to go basically. You can clear a wave and then immediately hop over to the other side. Do note that the teleporters are closed for the first 10 minutes, so this is nothing you can use for early ganks. There are also multiple new climbable rooftops with a bunch of boxes on them. There are plenty of ropes around to get up to them. The range from which you can hit a walker is increased from 30 meters to 32 meters, meaning you're not quite as likely to get beamed by the walker while you're significantly out of range. You can actually hit back a little bit earlier. Along with that, the drop rate of golden statues for the buffs has been increased by 6%. We get a new item, which is an upgrade from high velocity mag. It's called Headhunter, 3,500 souls, 50% bullet velocity, 15% weapon damage, 150 bullet shield, and landing a headshot deals bonus damage, heals you for a portion of your max HP, and briefly grants you bonus movement speed. That's 140 extra damage, 8% heal per headshot, and 2% movement speed. Uh, the duration of that is 3 seconds, and the cooldown is 6 seconds. So in a way, this is also an upgraded headshot booster, even though that's not required for this item. Very interesting design, I think this might be quite popular. 
Toxic Bullets had its bleed damage reduced by 1%, but its healing reduction increased by 10% from 55% to 65%. It currently does a lot of DPS and now it'll be a little bit more utility, but better at the utility that it's meant to do, so I think this is a good change. It also gives 100 bonus health now. Intensifying Magazine now steadily ramps back down to 0% when you stop shooting, rather than stopping instantly, so you can kind of fire again if you just take a quick break in between. Warpstone had its bullets resist reduced from 40% to 30%. Sharpshooter no longer provides bonus headshot damage but gets more bullet shield in return and also gets 10% extra weapon damage. Siphon Bullets loses 12% weapon damage so I guess it's more focused on the actual passive now. In the Vitality section, Combat Barrier now also grants 8% fire rate while active. Enchanter's Barrier now grants 8% cooldown reduction while shielded, which I think is going to be fairly popular with certain spell builds. Healing Booster now comes with a 15% heal reduction resist, and Leech no longer has this in return. I think this makes a lot more sense for the design of the item. Along with that, it also no longer has 6% bullet resist now. Superior Stamina has its air jump and air dash distance reduced from plus 40% to plus 30%. Here's a quick comparison. Unstoppable can now be cast while channeling, which will help a lot of characters with their ultimates. Along with that, the cooldown has been reduced from 65 to 60 seconds. Phantom Strike had its range reduced from 30 meters to 25 meters, so you need to be a little bit closer. Spirit Strike had its debuff duration, the Spirit Resist Reduction, increased from 8 to 13 seconds, while it only has an 8 seconds cooldown, so this could be very interesting for certain playstyles now. Quicksilver Reload no longer has plus 10% reload time. This was actually a downside as far as I know, so I think it's interesting that they're removing this trade-off, but maybe that's the direction they generally want to go. Slowing Hex had its projectile speed increased by 30%. It was quite slow beforehand, so I think this is a good change, just make it more reliable. Cooldown was also reduced by 2 seconds. Rapid Recharge had its charge count reduced from plus 3 to plus 2, which is a significant hit for certain builds. However, in return, the faster time between charges has been increased from 40% to 55%, and the cooldown reduction for charge abilities has been increased from 20% to 25%. Knockdown, which is a very effective counter to many abilities in the game, had its delay reduced from 3 seconds to 2 seconds, so it's going to feel a lot better. Along with that, the stun duration has been reduced from 1.25 seconds to 0.9 seconds, but I don't think most people are going to care all that much. You mainly look into disrupt enemies and not to long-term CC them and it'll fulfill that purpose better because it happens quicker. The cast range is also increased from 35 meters to 45 meters, meaning you can use it a lot more safely. Here's a quick demonstration, I can be this far from an enemy, I drop that on them, and it's already done. So much more fluid overall. Silence Cliff, on the other hand, has its duration reduced by 0.5 seconds. This change isn't that big, but it's funny enough to include it anyways. Abrams' Infernal Resilience Regeneration Time increased from 16 to 18 seconds. This is a nerf. Abrams now does pull-ups on the zipline once again. This is a buff. Bebop is no longer able to sprint while his gun is charging up. He gets slowed down immediately. But his gun range is increased from 30 to 32 meters. The next change comes with a bit of a problem. Bebop can now hook allies and will no longer hook allies if he doesn't intend to. So I can hook an enemy through an ally by just using the hook. And if I use the self-cast modifier, then I can hook an ally instead, and if I use that on an enemy, it will not hook them. So you can choose who you want to hook. The problem is that the settings don't really allow for that in most setups right now. The button that you're using to assign this is the self-cast modifier button. But this is the only way this works. If you're using any of the other cast modes, the press and hold, the double tap, it does not work. And as you can see, you can also not assign a key for that effect then. So if I try press and hold, it is not registering it. They could solve this by, for example, giving it a second casting stage like they do for Viscous the Cube, so that you can choose first what kind of enemy you want to target, uh, or what kind of ally, but right now it's just not working quite as intended. His hyperbeam can now be cancelled by a parry, as you can see here, and we're also seeing the new melee test dummy. Dynamo gets some pretty significant changes. His gun damage is reduced from 15 to 13, which will be quite impactful with all the scaling going into it for more gun-focused builds. Along with that, his cast time on Singularity is increased from 0.1 to 0.2 seconds, 
and the radius is decreased from 9 meters to 8 meters. You can see uh, this is not enough in order to catch someone. You need to be a fair bit closer now. One meter may not sound like much, but when it comes to radius, that is quite impactful. Gray Talon's charged shot gets nerfed. The collision size is reduced by 8%, the base damage by 5, and the tier 2 upgrade is reduced by another 5. You can see that you can still aim quite far next to the target to hit them though. In return, Grey Talon's fire rate now scales with Spirit, same as his movement speed. He can now also use multiple air dashes while in his 2 in Reign of Fire. While the mobility is getting some buffs, the traps are getting some nerfs, the duration of the route is reduced from 2 seconds to 1.25, which in my opinion feels a lot more fair with how frustrating the traps were to deal with. However, the immobilizing trap now applies a 50% movement slow for one second after the route, so it's not going to feel quite as bad, but still not great. And the upgrade on this, the immobilizing trap, will now give you two seconds extra slow instead of previously one second extra route. Overall, I would say that is a quite significant nerf simply because enemies will be able to dash a lot sooner as well. Haze gets a surprising amount of buffs. Her base bullet damage is increased from 5.3 to 5.6. Her sleep dagger impact now happens immediately, so you can see the damage there right away as it lands, rather than after the drowsy period, but the drowsy period is increased from 0.25 seconds to 0.35 seconds, so just a little bit later. The sleep dagger cooldown is reduced from 27 seconds to 25 seconds, and the smoke bomb radius is reduced from 18 meters to 20 meters, meaning you will be seen later. Fixation's tier 2 upgrade now has 40 max stacks instead of which means you can reach a total of 70 stacks. Bullet Dance now provides plus 2 weapon damage in the base ability. Why Haze is getting such significant buffs I don't know, as far as I can tell she's kind of performing fairly well across most levels of play. Inferno's Flame Dash gets hit quite hard. The vertical reach on Flame Dash DPS is reduced so you can't hit enemies as high above the Flame Dash itself. The speed is now affected by slows and it's not affected by movement speed increases. The Flame Dash tier 1 duration is reduced from 7 seconds to 6 seconds. But there is a buff it gets in return which is the width now increasing with the ability range perk. So this is the normal trail width. If you're turning back now you can see it's kind of just about hitting both edges here on the boxes and on the wall. If we completely max this out with improved reach on the ability then you can see it looks like this and you can already see the box are getting smashed and we're still hitting this edge so it's significantly wider. Catalyst gets some early damage nerfs, the amplification is reduced from 30 to 25% on the base level but then the amplification you get when maxing out the ability is up from 10 to 15%. Usually not the first ability that people will max out, so you're not gonna see that super often. The tier 2 upgrade has the lifesteal reduced by 5% as well. Ivy gets pretty significant changes and partially nerfs. Her bullet damage increase per boon, so per stat upgrade, is reduced from 0.55 to 0.5 and the health per boon is decreased from 41 to 35 instead. Self-casting her ultimate, the airdrop, will now have a 2 seconds windup, so a fair bit slower than before. On the other hand, you can now control and shift up and down to adjust your flight. I'm not sure if I personally prefer this method compared to just flying like this, but the option is there if you like it. Her max movement speed in the ult is also reduced from 20 to 18. Picking up allies though is still instant. They are no longer silenced like they introduced on the last patch and instead have 50% reduced damage. That means it's not as rewarding to, for example, carry a 7 around while he's ulting, but instead you want to drop him off at a certain location and keep going from there so he just deals the most amount of damage possible. Calvin's bullet radius is increased from 5 to 6, giving you a little more leeway when it comes to aiming. His base health from living up is increased from 45 to 50 per boon. Ice Beam's max slow is increased from 60 to 80%, and it can now also be used to secure soul orbs, which makes it a lot more convenient to hold it down during the laning phase. This can even be used for denying, but on the other hand, the tier 3 upgrade for the Arctic Beam uh, only has 13 meters range instead of 15 now. The tier 2 frost grenade upgrade now heals for 10 more HP than before. Lash Scrapple no longer gives a stamina on use. But if you listen closely, you'll hear that it has a new sound effect, making it a little bit more distinct in the battlefield. You will definitely know when a grapple has happened. 7 gets various adjustments, the first one of them being the static charge radius being increased from 5 meters to 6 meters. 
the second rank of the ability also has the radius increased from plus 7 meters to plus 8 meters. So this is quite a big thing now. Pop an improved reach on that and it's almost ridiculous how much this covers. The Stormcloud power scaling is reduced from 1.1 to 0.8, so a very significant decrease here. However, in return, the time to reach the maximum radius is reduced from 6 seconds to just 3 seconds. You can see it expanding much, much faster than it used to. So you're dealing less damage, but you're also hitting enemies quicker. You're also getting a plus 20% bullet resist in the base ability itself, making you a little bit more tanky while you're up in the air. Keep in mind that 7 is also significantly affected by the knockdown buff when it comes to using his ultimate. Shiv gets a very tiny buff and then a ton of nerfs. Part of his code was being considered a headshot, so that's fixed now. However, in return, his bullet damage growth per boon is reduced from 0.5 to 0.4, which is quite a significant decrease. Along with that, his health per boon is reduced from 41 to 35. His gun falloff range is reduced by 10%, so I'm assuming this is the max value for each or at least for the total value here uh, which would mean you just can't shoot quite as far using this here is max range now the slice and dice base damage increase on the tier 2 is reduced from 100 to 85 and consider that this also affects the echo so this is quite impactful the cooldown reduction on the tier 3 only considers creeps for half of their value the deferred damage on bloodletting is reduced from 35 percent to 30 percent the targeting UI for Shiv's Killing Blow is a lot more clear now, you will see that right here, uh, so it's very obvious visually that this is execute range. Vindicta's stake duration is reduced from 2.25 seconds to 2 seconds. The Crow Familiar duration scaling is reduced from 0.05 to 0.04. Viscous Primary Fire is a lot more usable now, it has been improved in terms of damage and scaling. And there's also an alt fire now, which is at the cost of six bullets, but it's a little bit of AOE. You can see that you can hit multiple creeps with this. So this will have its use cases similar to Yamato's right click. The spirit scaling on splatter is increased from 1.4 to 1.5. The damage on the bounces of the max rank was previously 66% and 33%. It's now 70 and 50%. The Puddle Punch now deals 110% of your melee damage. You can see my melee damage right here, 63. The Puddle Punch deals 69 right now without any items. The Tier 2 and Tier 3 upgrades are somewhat swapped for this ability. The second upgrade is now 50 damage and 20% movement slow, which was 10 seconds cooldown reduction beforehand. And the third upgrade is now 12 seconds cooldown reduction, which was previously 80 damage and 20% movement slow. The delay before Puddle Punch is also increased from 0.25 seconds to 0.35 seconds, giving you just a little bit more time to actually react to it. Goo Ball has its spirit scaling increased from 1.05 to 1.3. And along with that, the acceleration has also been increased and the turn radius as well as the turn radius after bouncing should be better than before. Warden has his base movement speed reduced from 6.5 down to 6. His fire rate scaling with Spirit has also been reduced from 0.375 to 0.3. Yamato's Power Slash max damage requirement has been reduced from 1.5 seconds to 1.4 seconds. Still feels way too slow to me personally. The collision radius has been reduced by 8%, but as you can see, you can aim quite far off the enemy and still end up hitting them anyway, so that's not really going to be a massive problem. The Crimson Slash radius has been increased from 12 to 13 meters. The soldier return area is now red, so it's easier to detect which place is the pickup area and the return area for new players. There are more changes in this patch, these are just the ones I consider the most important ones. All in all, an absolutely massive patch, I hope you enjoyed this overview. If you did, consider subscribing, clicking the bell so you get notified of future videos, maybe leaving a like, that helps me out a lot. Again, there are more changes in this patch, I focused on the most major ones, but that's not even all of them. I will link the patch notes down below if you want to read up on the rest. If you don't know what to watch at this point, I have a bunch of beginner guides and tips. I will link a couple of them here so you can check them out. Thanks to my patrons for supporting this video, and thank you for watching. Duke Sloth, out.